Well, we go out with Jimmy, we come back with Jimmy. I'm uh, I'm wide awake now. <laughs> Move over, Rover. Let Jimmy take over. Rockin' Company's Rockin' See You up next with Adam Munster Tiger. Follow him at AdamCM777. He's the publisher of BuffStampede.com, covering the Buffs year-round. We'll pick up the discussion uh, on on the uh, sanctions and the extension for Mike McIntyre, the sanctions against uh, the chancellor, Coach uh, Mike McIntyre, and Athletic Director Rick George. But first, tell you that Rock and Company is making Colorado beautiful with natural stone construction, natural rock for five decades, rockandco.com, and Zadie's Deli. Hitting it out of the park, those great sandwiches stuffed with homemade corned beef, the other deli treats like pastrami, free parking front and back in Cherry Creek, 121 Adams Street, and they deliver, and uh, welcome to the show, Adam. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, good morning. So uh, we've got a whole report here that's been issued. I've read the Hale report. I've got through the first 70 or so pages of the O'Connor investigation. We've got uh, discipline handed down, Phil Stefano. Suspended for 10 days, the chancellor. It was his technical decision that was in error, and he admits it, in deciding that there was no jurisdiction for the university to address the claims of uh, violence and domestic abuse by the complainant against uh, then coach of the uh, Colorado uh, defensive backfield, the safeties, Joe Tumpkin, that led to basically all of this and the punishment of 10 days suspended without pay for De Stefano, $100,000 fine, essentially a contribution to uh, domestic violence organizations, nonprofits, by each Rick George, the athletic director, and by Mike McIntyre, the coach. And Mike McIntyre has a three-year extension uh, that we've long been waiting to hear about, which he certainly earned as a football coach. So who's guilty of what here? Who's guilty of what? I, I think you start with Phil Stefano, And yeah, I think he deserved the most harsh punishment out of the three and frankly, that suspension could have maybe even been a little bit longer when you consider the fact that DeStefano himself admits that he created the Office of Inequity and Compliance. So you'd think you'd have a little better relationship with the, the department that you created to kind of know the reporting policies. Now, there was a lack of training with McIntyre and, and Rick George there. Maybe we'll talk about that later in this segment. But in terms of McIntyre and Rick George, it's tough. As Bruce Benson said, you know, there's going to be some people that look at this punishment and say it's not harsh enough. But when you look at the fact that they did report this up and did have that lack of training, and you know this investigation went on for a long time and was a very stressful process for those both those guys, you're, you're probably fine with, with that. But yeah, I think De Stefano deserved uh, the, the, the harshest punishment out of the three. De Stefano made the key decision that set this whole thing off. McIntyre reported to George. George went upstairs to De Stefano. They do each did what they usually do in a difficult situation where they may not be familiar, and it's not a football decision. It goes way beyond that, and for those who don't know, Stefano decided the university did not have jurisdiction to enter into this situation because it happened off-campus with a non-campus employee, and and the uh, abuse happened at non-CU events so long as they knew. There was a series of miscommunications about the amount of abuse and and what went on and what who knew when, but that single decision of not asking for help and making that decision himself when De Stefano is not the person who decides that. It is the OIEC that decides whether there's jurisdiction or not. He overstepped his bounds and made a mistake. In terms of the training, and maybe we should talk about that next, it's clear in the training that they did receive in 2013, which was you know a number of years ago, not updated since then. The policies have updated and evolved, but the training did not continue. It does say that you must report uh, incidents of, of domestic violence, sexual violence, uh, any of the anything sexual harassment, stalking, anything on dating. But it also says, which is confusing, on the Boulder campus, and these events did not take place on the Boulder campus. But the first part of that sentence makes Rick George and Mike McIntyre and Phil Stefano responsible for reporting these events. Right. Yeah, that's the part of it there. And you even look at the separate report by the Wilmer Hale Group from Ken Salazar. You can look that up on cu.edu. Uh, it points out this was online training, uh, not in person, um, something that, again, basically it talks about only things on campus, which in this case it didn't occur, obviously. So you're talking about training four years ago online doesn't really specify in this situation. 
So why wasn't the OIEC penalized like McIntyre, Rick George, and Phil Stefano? I mean, there's clearly lack of training there. And it's because the Cozen O'Connor law firm wasn't, wasn't impart, impartial with their investigation when it came to looking at the OIEC. Uh, this is something the Cozen O'Connor law firm had advised the OIC in policies in the past. I mean, this is a, a firm that's written Title IX laws, is known for taking down football programs. And the OIEC actually went around the regions, went rogue and hired Cozen O'Connor, knowing that this was a firm that wasn't going to find them at fault. It was basically protecting their own behind. And that's why the Regents decided to put Ken Salazar on retainer. So that's, I think, the, the most frustrating part of this investigation. You know, you're going to spend uh, around a million dollars for this investigation. It should have been with a law firm that didn't have those, that connection with the OIC at CU in the past. Uh, I agree with that. And certainly having no training once the policies have evolved and changed and uh, the initial training being merely online, there are great problems, and, and the reports uh, indicate that CU has to change what they do with this stuff, especially since 2015 when it became federal law that you must have these policies in place. And so the OIC didn't do that. It doesn't take away from the other side. And what's, what's really, we can get into the legalese as we have of all this, what's disturbing about the whole thing is the human nature side. It is certainly human nature to say, I know Joe Tumpkin, I work with him, I'd never seen him do anything like this. I just can't conceive of Joe Tumpkin doing what's alleged that he did. Uh, and Mike McIntyre having a hard time with that. What is difficult, though, to understand is that at no point does anybody do anything but CYA here. McIntyre, when you read the report, I'm more sympathetic to McIntyre than the, when the con conclusions came out as to what he tried to do. But bottom line, everybody runs scared and nobody really reaches out to the woman who is the complainant in this case. There's no compassion there, really, in terms of what the University of Colorado did. And I think that's where the verdict is damning for the University of Colorado. Yeah, there's no question. It, I mean, everybody cringed at times when reading that SI piece, or you, you do at times in the investigation. It was, you know, McIntyre thinking that he needed to go get a lawyer and not do this alone and, and got advice. And, and it just doesn't look good from, a, like you said, a human standpoint. And even Rick George has said, you know, with hindsight being 2020, they wish they had all this information back in December when they allowed Joe Tumpkin to make those defensive calls in the bowl game. And, you know, I, I am a firm believer in, in some form of due process. So it, it's such a complicated situation. But, yeah, you, you absolutely, your heart breaks for the victim, uh, obviously, if these allegations are true. Had the OIC properly trained these guys, had Stefano reported it to the OIEC, then this probably plays out so differently because they reach out to the victim and, and the, the, they know what to do in these situations. A head football coach and athletic director don't. So it was a, a very complicated saga that, that took place, and it's unfortunate how it all shaked out for sure. And, and you know, when, what, what makes the human nature even tougher is when the woman says, you can't report this because he'll kill me if he loses his job and then he'll kill himself. Yeah. And so McIntyre says, rightfully so. I told her I have to report this. He didn't report it externally. He did. He did take it to Rick George. Um, how liable should Rick George be for the fact that it just seems inconceivable that Tumpkin's attorney, uh, someone very familiar with the University of Colorado, uh, the uh, recommended by uh, Mike McIntyre as a possibility, Tumpkin's attorney, that Rick George says he just wasn't told that all these criminal procedures about an injunction, a protective order was all in process for weeks, and he says he was shocked by it on January 6th. That seems unlikely. Yeah, you would think you'd be doing more digging in that situation for sure. Uh, again, I mean, the, the conclusion was that there was no ill will. It was just they, they handled, mishandled, you know, it was, it was the bottom line. The optics, yeah, don't look good with the, that attorney reaching out to the victim. Apparently that's what happens in these situations, but again, it just does not look good. It, it, it all goes back to... If this had just been reported the OIC and these guys knew the policies, then this could have all pro – I mean, obviously the beatings, you can't, can't avoid that, and you can't turn back the clock with uh, all that hor horrific stuff that happened, but at least the process of this would have been taken care of. Yeah. It's, so it's really unfortunate. And the processes were in place, but for DeStefano's uh, decision that, he, that, he, that there was no jurisdiction here, everything yeah. – and it's not his decision to make. Everything would have been different. Uh, in the last 30 seconds here – or 20 seconds. What's different if Tumpkin winds up acquitted in court? What happens? Oh, gosh, that's such a big if. Uh, obviously, that would make this whole situation look drastically different. Uh, 
uh, they they had to have something there to to put these charges on him. So we'll we'll see how this plays out. I don't want to uh, speculate on that. All right, he is Adam Munstiger. That is BuffStampede.com's editor. Uh, great reading all about the Buffs, including the stuff off the field like this. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Michael. All right, and that is Rockin' Companies, Rockin' See You, brought to you by Zadie's Deli. When we come back, we'll either pick this up, we'll make an executive decision here, or uh, we're going to talk about something else like uh, Colorado Rockies look like a postseason team. What do they need?